For this screencast, we're going to take a look at solving inequalities. And the good news is solving inequalities is very similar to solving equations. However, I have two cautions for us to keep in mind. First is that when we're solving an inequality, we always want to place the variable on the left. And this reason will become obvious uh, after we've done an example or two. The second caution is that when we multiply or divide by a negative, the inequality sign switches. And I believe that when we talked about this earlier in the year, I explained why. But I'll show you here real quick why this works. When we multiply or divide by a negative, we switch the inequality. So here's an example. Um, you, you will all agree that 3 is greater than 2. But notice if we were to multiply both sides of this inequality by negative 1, we'd have negative 3 here and negative 2 here. And negative 3 is not greater than negative 2, so we have to switch the inequality. So there's a reason why, or an example as to why, when you multiply or divide by negative, you switch the inequality. Let's take a look at some examples. For these uh, inequalities, not only are we going to solve the inequality and get the variable by itself, we're also going to graph it. So to solve this inequality, we're going to add 9 to both sides. And so we end up with x is less than 11. So there's a lot of numbers that would work for this inequality as long as they're smaller than 11. For example, 10 minus 9 would give you 1, and 1 is smaller than 2. Um, but if we put in a number bigger than 11, like 15, and do the subtraction, this ends up being a false statement. But there are a bunch of numbers that actually make this inequality true as long as those numbers are less than 11. And to graph this, we're going to put an open circle at 11 and shade to the left. This shows all the possible solutions or all the possible numbers that, when substituted for x, make this inequality true. To solve this inequality for x, we're going to divide both sides by negative 5. But since we're dividing by negative, we need to remember to switch this inequality. So our answer here to this inequality is x is less than negative 4. So I'm going to put an open circle at negative 4 since we're not including negative 4. And then it's less than negative 4, so I'm going to shade to the left. Let's pick a number that's less than negative 4 and substitute it in here to see that this is a true statement. Let's pick a number like negative uh, 6 since negative 6 is smaller than negative 4. Is this a true statement? Is 30 greater than 20? Well, yes it is. So we didn't have to substitute negative 6 in here. We could have substituted another number that was less than negative 4. But this just shows that we uh, have found the correct answer to this problem. Let's take a look at this example here. I'm going to start by subtracting 4x from both sides. Because remember, I recommended to have the variable on the left. So we'd have 2x minus 3 is less than 7. And then we're going to add 3 to both sides to isolate the variable. So we'll have 2x is less than 10. And then dividing both sides by 2 gives us x is less than 5. Now, let's pretend instead of this being x uh, less than, less than here, let's pretend that this is less than or equal to. How would this change our answer? Well, it doesn't change it by much, but it would change our graph a little bit. In terms of the graph, instead of having an open circle at 5, we'd have a closed circle at 5. So x is less than or equal to 5 is how we'd read that. And x is less than or equal to 5 means we have to include 5 as well as all the numbers to the left of 5. So can we do a quick check to see if we've found the correct solutions for this as well? Well, most certainly. Let's pick a number less than 5. Let's say we pick 0. So we're going to substitute 0 in for x here and here and see if we have a true statement. 6 times 0 would be 0, and then 0 minus 3 would be negative 3. And then 4 times 0 would be 0, and 7 plus 0 would be 7. Is this a true statement? Yes, so uh, we've chosen a number that is in our solution set, our, our list of values here. All the numbers that make this inequality true are 5 and anything less than 5. Let's take a look at this one here. Um, to get x by itself, we'd multiply both sides of the equation by 2. So 2 times negative 2 would be negative 4. So we have negative 4 is less than x. Now, most of the time, we want to have the 
variable on the left because it makes it a little bit easier to think about. Here we can see all the numbers have to be smaller than 5. But this is saying negative 4 is less than the number, which is kind of confusing. So we're going to rewrite this. And here's what I mean by rewriting this. Let's think about a separate example. Uh, let's say 3 is greater than 0. That's obviously a true statement, but I could also say 0 is smaller than 3. So those are two different ways to write that same idea. And that's what we're going to do here. We're going to rewrite this, and instead of saying negative 4 is less than x, we're going to say x is greater than negative 4. And so to graph all the solutions for this inequality, we'd have an open circle at negative 4, and since it says greater than, greater than means bigger, we're going to shade to the right. And we can put a number into the original inequality here to see if this is a true statement. As long as our number that we're going to pick for x is bigger than negative 4, um, let's say we pick 0, is this a true statement? If we put in a 0 for x here, is this a true statement? Is negative 2 smaller than 0? And the answer is yes, so we've found the correct solution to this problem. Let's take a look at one final example. This one's a little bit more involved. We're going to have to start by distributing the 2 to both the x and the negative 8. And we're going to have to distribute the 3 as well. I'm going to now combine like terms, so I'm going to have 2x minus 7 is greater than or equal to 8 minus 3x. And I'm going to add 3x to both sides to get x on the left. So I'll have 5x minus 7 is greater than or equal to 8 adding 7 to both sides. Now, I know you might think that this is a lot of work for this problem. It's not really difficult work, it's just there's a lot of steps involved. And then the last step here would be to divide both sides by 5. So our final solution is x is greater than or equal to 3. And graphing the solution, showing a picture for all the numbers that work in this inequality would look like this. It says equal to 3, so I'm going to fill in the dot at 3. Greater than or equal to 3 means I'm going to shade to the right. And once again, we can choose a number here and see if it works when we substitute it in. Let's pretend that x is, let's say, 4. So we'll put a 4 in place of x here and a 4 in place of x here. That would give us 2 times 4 minus 8 would be negative 4 plus 9. And we want to see if that's greater than or equal to 3 times, well, 4 minus 4 is 0, so 3 times 0 would be 0. So let's just keep simplifying this here to see if this is a true statement. And we'd have 1 is greater than or equal to negative 4. That's obviously true, so it sounds like we've gotten the correct answer to this inequality. Uh, please don't forget to do the few survey questions at tinyurl, and we'll continue to look at solving inequalities in class tomorrow.